Good morning and welcome to First Baptist Church in Great New California. Uh, today is the uh, 12th of December and it's the third Sunday of Advent. Uh, this Sunday we did the lighting of the shepherd's candle. The first Noel, the angel did say, was to certain poor shepherds and fields as they lay. In fields where they lay, keeping their sheep, on a cold winter's night that was so deep. Noel, Noel, born is the king of Israel. And then we have the reading of Luke 2, 17 through 18. After seeing them, they reported the message they were told about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Okay, join with me as we sing number 85 in your hymnal, The First Noel. <clears throat> the First Noel. And we're doing this a cappella. The First Noel. The angels did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay, keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night. That was so deep. No well, no well, no well, no Born is the king of Israel for oh, to see. There was a star shining in the east beyond them far and to the earth it gave great light and so it continued both day and night. No well, no well, no well, no well. Born is the King of Israel, and by the light of that same star, the wise men came from country far to seek for a king was their intent and to follow the star wherever it went no well no of Israel. Then let us all with one accord sing praises to our heavenly Lord who hath made heaven and earth of naught, and with his blood mankind hath he brought. No well, no well, no well, no well. Born is the king of the Israel. 
Israel. Amen. And again, the fourth verse. And let us all with one accord sing praises to our heavenly Lord, who hath made heaven and earth of naught, and with his blood mankind hath brought. And of course, we speak to the, um, the incarnate, the final word of, of God, that being Jesus Christ. And now we have our, our time of tithe and offering. I will go ahead and say a prayer. Most Heavenly Father God, we thank you so much for all your blessings. Lord, we thank you for your provisions. Lord, help us to continue to remember that everything that we have comes from you. Lord, help us to remember that you are all that we need in our life, that you are our sufficiency. Lord, we say these things and we ask these things and through your son's precious name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Now we have a time of um, the uh, pastor's sermon. It's going to be on Micah 5, uh, verses 2 through 5. Micah 5, 2 through 5. Pastor. Well, good morning, everybody. At least up here, it's a little wet. Nice little sprinkle. It's better than being frosty and cold, I guess. At any rate, we're going to be uh, looking at today's scripture, which gives us some of the signs of the coming of the Messiah. It doesn't, it doesn't give us all of them, because there's like over 400 prophecies, but we get a couple of them here. And the author was looking into the future for the first coming of the Messiah. This would be Micah the Minor Prophet. These verses are actually part of uh, the Christmas story that we uh, celebrate this time of year. Now it's unlikely Jesus was born in December. Shepherds usually did not sleep on hillsides with their sheep in December. That time of year they'd normally be sheltered in, in caves or in other structures. The date was picked to identify the birth with the winter solstice. And the time of year is not important. The place of birth is what is important, and that is what is in the scriptures, not the date. If the place of birth is prophesied and historically documented. What we do see here is we need to study and learn the prophecies around the birth of Jesus to fully understand that he is the Messiah, and that God has a specific plan for the Messiah. Now, if you open your Bibles to the minor prophet Micah, chapter 5, verse 2, and here we're going to see that we are told the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. Verse 2, Bethlehem Ephrathah, you are small among the clans of Judah. One will come from you to be ruler over Israel for me. His origin is from antiquity, from eternity. So out of a small clan, out of a small clan will come the Messiah. Now, the prophet's writing indicates a specific Bethlehem. Now, this is important if you're studying scripture in the, in the historical aspect of, of uh, the, his birth, because there were two or three Bethlehems at that time in Israel. So, what we have here is a specific Bethlehem being mentioned. Now, Bethlehem means house of bread, and Ephrathah means uh, fruitful. So, it is a region where this specific Bethlehem is located. It is specific. The Messiah comes from eternity past to rule eternity in the future. We're being told the Messiah existed before his human birth, and we know him as Christ Jesus. Jesus tells us that he existed before his birth also. We see that in John chapter 8, verse 58, where Jesus said to them, I assure you, before Abraham was, I am. So Jesus is one of the line of King David. 
And he's, Joseph is a direct descendant of King David through King Solomon, David's son. That's Matthew, you'll find that in Matthew chapter 1, verses 6 or 16 in the begats. Mary, mother of Jesus, a direct descendant of David's son, Nathan, that we find in Luke chapter 3, verses 23 through 32. Now, the prophecies are very clear that the Messiah will come out of the house of David. So no matter what happened to the line of David in exile in Babylon earlier, one of David's lines will survive to return to, to uh, Israel. Now in the book of Esther, we read how close that line came to perishing. Jesus was born about 700 years after the prophecies in today's scripture. Though his family lives in Nazareth, not Bethlehem, he does fulfill a prophecy about what he will be called. He will be called a Nazarene. Matthew, chapter 2, verse 23, this is about Joseph, Mary, and of Jesus. Then he went and settled in a town called Nazareth to fulfill what was spoken through the prophets, that he will be called a Nazarene. Now, a Nazarene is not a word uh, that uh, denotes a compliment. It was a derogatory word as they were looked down upon by much of the Jewish society. Now, his origin of antiquity goes hand in hand with what John says in, in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So later in John, we'll learn that Jesus is the Word. Now you show your belief in Messiah by believing in the prophecies. How can you believe he's the Messiah if you don't believe the prophecies? They go hand in hand. They're married. Now what's so hard to believe in the birth of the Messiah and the prophecies? What's hard about believing in those? Think about it. People believe in what Aristotle wrote, though there are only seven original manuscripts left. The oldest being written 1,400 years after the very original writing by Aristotle. People also believe in Plato's uh, tetralogies, though only 49 of the original manuscripts exist. The oldest being written 1,300 years after the first one. We have over 5,600 New Testament original manuscripts in existence. And there are more being found all the time. The oldest was only written 50 years after the original. We can believe what Plato wrote. We can believe what Aristotle wrote. Why do we have trouble believing what's in the New Testament? There are many events in history that match what's written in scriptures around the birth of Jesus. We can do that by looking at the king's mention, the, the astronomy, uh, and all sorts of historical events. They all match. Why do we have trouble believing the scriptures about his birth? Well, let's go on and take a look at verse 3. The scriptures instruct Israel will be abandoned until the Messiah arrives. Well, Micah, oh, chapter 5, verse 3. Therefore he will abandon them until the time when she who is in labor has given birth, then the rest of his brothers will return to the people of Israel. Kind of interesting how they wrote in those days. You kind of have to know live there sometimes that follow exactly what they're saying on, on the surface. But what we have is a promise of a restoration of Israel. See, after this is written, centuries later, the divided kingdom of Israel and Judah will be defeated and the people dispersed. Many of them will be dispersed, others brought in. But upon their return, the temple was rebuilt. However, in Malachi chapter 1 verse 10, God basically tells the religious leaders, by the way, Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament, last minor prophet, God basically tells religious leaders they may as well shut down the rebuilt temple as he will not accept their offering due to their disobedience. Malachi 1.10, I wish one of you would shut the temple doors so you would no longer kindle a useless fire on my altar. I am not pleased with you, says the Lord of hosts, and I will accept no offering from your hands. After this book, Malachi, is written, we have about 400 years of silence from God. That silence is broken with the appearance of the angel Gabriel in, in the temple uh, to the father of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist will introduce the people of Israel to the Messiah, who we know is Jesus. The abandonment of Israel is ended with the coming of the Messiah. The second coming of the Messiah, which has not happened yet, is when the Messiah will rule. 
Remember, God is a spirit of order, not chaos. And if you see chaos around you, it's not of God, it's of Satan. So how do you show the Messiah has arrived? Well, for one thing, you could celebrate Christmas instead of Xmas or Happy Holidays. Uh, you can put up decorations and some acknowledgement of the birth of Christ or his ministry instead of winning the Pooh, Star Wars, or other non-biblical characters. You might even give out Christian candy canes. You know they're Christian candy canes? They're not the purple ones, not the orange ones, they're not the, the brown ones. They're the ones that are white with a thick red stripe and three narrow red stripes. And the box that they come in will explain the meaning of those stripes and the meaning of the shape of the cane itself. That is, it'll actually have a whole curvature on it. Or as many nowadays, it'll be just a straight line. But the box that the Christian ones come in will explain all this. Finally, in verses 4 through 5, we are told that uh, peace on earth comes from the Messiah, who we know as Christ Jesus, not man. So some man goes around saying, I'll bring you peace to the earth. That's uh, not true. The peace will come through the Messiah. Verses 4 and 5. He will stand and shepherd them in the strength of Yahweh, in the majestic name of Yahweh his God. They will live securely, for then his greatness will extend to the ends of the earth. He will be their peace. So the Messiah will ultimately bring peace. Now the city of David is Bethlehem where King David was born. The capital city of David was Jerusalem where he ruled. David was a shepherd as a child and a teenager. Kings were referred to as shepherds as they would care for their people. The shepherd would care for their flock. The kingdom of God's people will be stored in the Messiah who will be a descendant of King David. Psalm 22, verses 27 28. All the ends of the earth remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations will bow down before you. For kingship, kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. So the Messiah will protect and care for his people just as a shepherd does. Uh, Jesus referred to himself as a shepherd. John chapter 10 verse 14 I am the good shepherd I know my own sheep and they know me and the father knows me and I know the father I am my life for the sheep who do you think the sheep are that he is referring to they are those who accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior scripture instructs that the Messiah will bring universal peace this will occur on the second coming but before the second coming, we have to have a first coming, which is the birth of Jesus, which is what we celebrate this time of year. The peace referred to is freedom from war, prosperity, and spiritual peace. Jesus even told us he will bring us peace, but not as the world brings it. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to the world as the world gives. What ways do you show the Messiah will bring peace? How do you show others the Messiah will bring peace? Well, you might start by treating others as you want to be treated. You might offer them the eternal gift of salvation by witnessing to them the gospel. You could do as Paul often does in his letters. He frequently prays for them right at the beginning of his letter and greets them with peace from God. As an example, Galatians chapter 1, verse 3. Grace to you, and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We could even tell them about the birth of the Messiah, Christ Jesus. And this would be giving them the true meaning of Christmas, which is spiritual rather than a national holiday of spending. That is, National Holiday Retail Spending Day. So we see we are told the Messiah will be born of Bethlehem. The scriptures instruct Israel will be abandoned until the Messiah returns. And we are told the peace on earth comes in Messiah, who we know as Christ Jesus, not man. Now the challenge for you this week is to tell a non-believer about the truth surrounding Christmas. 
he might even remember the origin of Christmas. The word Christmas is a contraction of the term Christ Mass. Now think about it. It's a, it's a contraction of the term Christ Mass. So, you think about what's a contraction. Well, think of the word cannot. We quite often say can't. It's a contraction. Do not. We may say don't. Contraction. Did not. Didn't. Contraction. Well, Christ's Mass is a contraction, which which is Christmas. Mass, of course, Christ being Christ Jesus, or the Messiah, and Mass being celebration. Celebration of gathering up for the celebration. This did not come into existence until the Middle Ages. Now, if you've not prayed for the Holy Spirit to come into you, not specifically accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you may want to pray to him, actually I encourage you to pray to him, to be your Lord and Savior, and be saved eternally. You never know what will happen in the next ten minutes or tomorrow. Accept Christ now and be a part of God's kingdom. May God bless you and have a Merry Christmas. Thank you, Pastor Michael. So our closing song is going to be number 111, and you can know Sing Me Now Christmas. But before we do that, uh, just announcements that on uh, Monday, from seven, Mondays on 7, uh, from 7 to 8 p.m., we have the uh, Christian 12-step program. On Wednesdays, of course, we have Bible study from 7 to 8 p.m. Saturdays, sometimes we have a work party, usually from about 10 to 12. If you're interested in being a part of the work party, contact the church to see if we're actually going to be having one that day. We have a Bible study, I mean a business meeting uh, right after here. Next Sunday we have potluck. Uh, hopefully we still have uh, Sandra and Steve on the phone. And just wanted to wish them a belated happy anniversary. I believe the anniversary was on November the 23rd. So happy anniversary to you guys if you're still there. And then on the 10th of December, we had Sharon and Dawn's uh, anniversary. I didn't calculate it to see what anniversary it was, but uh, they were born, they were married in 1966. This is kind of like one of the shortest services we've had. Wow, 20 minutes. Part of that is because I only had one song in there. Uh, so let's see the singly now for Christmas, number 111. Sing we now on Christmas, no else sing we hear. Hear our grateful praises to the babe so dear. Sing we know well, the King is born know well. Sing we now of Christmas, sing we now know well. Angels call to shepherds, leave your flocks at rest. Journey forth to Bethlehem. Find the lamb kid blessed. Sing we know well. The king is born know well. Sing we now of Christmas. Sing we now know well. In the stall they found him. Joseph and Mary mild. Seated round the manger. Watching the holy child. Sing we know well, the King is born know well. Sing we now of Christmas, sing we now know well. From the eastern country came the kings afar, bearing gifts to Bethlehem, guided by a star. Sing we know well. The King is born know well. Sing we now of Christmas, sing we now know well. Golden bird they took there, 
gifts of greatest price. There was never a stable so like paradise. Sing we know well, the King is born know well. Sing we now of Christmas, sing we now know well. So I hope that everybody has a wonderful week this week. And that each one of us is used by God to, in one way or another, share the gospel of Jesus Christ, whether that be um, by the way that we treat people, by the way we present ourselves, by, and by actually using words and, and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, somebody, a couple of people kind of got on my case on Facebook because I had... I put the uh, quote in there that about, um, I can't remember it exactly now, goodness, but it's about sharing Christ with other people, about evangelizing. And then uh, right afterwards it says, and use words if necessary. Well, a lot of people thought that that meant that, you know, that you should do works. And you don't have to worry about sharing Christ. It's like, that's not what that's talking about. The very way that we behave around other people, uh, the way that we behave when things are happening in our lives, the way we, the way we behave just in the grocery stores with the long lines or in the, you know, the gas lines. It's just very, very important that we uh, always behave in a way uh, that people will wonder what it is, what it is about us uh, that's different. And a lot of times people will ask. They'll say, why are you so happy on this dismal day? It's raining and we're standing in you know, the gas line here and the prices are over $5 in most stations in California. And you just look at them and say, well, I know it's really hard out there, but you know, I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that relationship just gives me such peace. And I hope that, you know, one day that you'll be able to have that as well. And if you'd like, I'd be willing to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with you. Or just pray with them. There's so many different ways that we as Christians can present Christ. And it doesn't always include sharing the gospel. Not everybody has the same giftings. Each one of us has our different giftings. Just it's so very important that our very behavior, our very, the words out of our mouth. And also it's good to know the gospel of Jesus Christ. So you can share the exact story with them. Just make a copy of uh, some of the Christmas hymns that, that share the whole story of Christ. And you can just sing it to them. Or you can read it to them. I know that's getting kind of silly. But. All right. So everybody have a, a wonderful day, a wonderful week. Uh, stay dry. Um, don't eat too much. And, um, yeah, you guys too. Um, okay. That's sweet. All right, I'm going to, to our online friends, love you guys very much, and I hope that we'll see you next week. And if you need any prayer requests, just give us a shout, send us an email. Make a comment in the YouTube page, whatever. You can reach us, and we will start lifting you up in prayer. Bless you.